Given that fluorite is probably the mineral that the United Kingdom is best known for, it seemed like a logical place to start. Most notably varieties of fluorite like Blue John fluorite that I'll touch on a little bit later on in the video, but also things like Diana Maria variety, which features exceptionally gemmy emerald green and sapphire blue bicoloured specimens. Some of these beautiful pieces react to ultraviolet light and fluoresce due to the presence of included elements such as yttrium. Granted, most of the pyrite you will see on sale in the UK will hail from places like Peru and Spain because they have quite large export economies for the mineral. However, pyrite can also be found in locations spanning the UK as well. For example, Cornwall, with its extensive history of local mining, probably has the highest concentration of pyrite, though it also occurs in the Jurassic mudrock sequences of central and eastern England from Dorset through the Cotswolds to the coast of Yorkshire. Incredible looking pyrotized fossils of things like plants and prehistoric animals, such as ammonites, trilobites or belemnites, occur all along Dorset's Jurassic coast and are a popular find amongst amateur geologists or tourists. Now galena, which is a mineral form of lead, was mined from deep mines located in Scotland, Wales as well as the Mendip Hills. These are areas where it's located very abundantly, but it occurs intermittently throughout the UK. It's an important ore mineral in lead and silver mining regions. Lead itself can be smelted from galena in ordinary wood fires, and it was essential to the Romans, who not only exported vast quantities of lead from Somerset's Mendip Hills, but also used it in their plumbing, and also as an eye makeup before it was discovered that it was horrifically toxic. The amount of lead ore in Britain was probably one of the main reasons the Romans invaded in the first place. Amethyst, which is the beautiful purple variety of quartz, which is not generally associated with the UK, was historically uncovered in and around the Cornish moors of St Austell, Land's End and Bodmin. Other locations include Devon and Scotland's Cairngorm. Amethyst from the United Kingdom tends to occur as a druzy covering with small quartz teeth and in tones of deep reddish purple. Though they are interesting specimen pieces, UK amethyst cannot rival the clarity or colour of Brazilian crystals and commercial mining has rarely been undertaken here as the occurrence of amethyst is actually quite rare. Both copper and tin have been mined in Britain since prehistoric times. Tin, of course, is necessary to smelt bronze, which is an alloy that played a vital cultural role during the aptly named Bronze Age. Copper in the UK has also been mined since before the Bronze Age. In the southwest of England, trading of copper and tin was essential to the Phoenicians from as early back as 1500 BCE, or before the Common Era. Britain was the world's fourth largest producer of copper, accounting for 10% of the total production during the 19th century, until extraction fell off rather rapidly, and today there's not really any active British copper mines today. Because obviously you can find copper intermittently throughout the UK, as you can probably imagine, there are associated copper-based minerals, things like malachite, things like chrysocolla or cassiterite, which is a tin oxide, chalcopyrite, which is a copper and iron sulfide, or chalcosite, which is a copper sulfide. These have been uncovered all over the UK, but most notably in places like Cornwall, and have been found there since the mining industry began in the Bronze Ages. And of course there's merlinite, which is a slightly more obscure mineral. Small merlinite deposits have been found in Cornwall. The name refers to translucent chalcedony with black dendrites, which essentially means tree-like formations, generally characterised of iron or manganese oxide, with inclusions of barium and potassium. Cornwall has deep association, of course, with Arthurian legends and myths relating to the fabled sorcerer Merlin, hence the name merlinite. It's probably quite difficult to actually make an educational video on British minerals without talking about Blue John fluorite. And I know I've already touched on fluorite at the beginning of this video, but Blue John probably deserves a section all of its own. Largely because there's a strong and convincing argument to be made that Blue John fluorite might just be the mineral that the UK is most famous for. Largely because we're the only country that has it, unless you believe some fairly dubious sources that insist that some has been found in China, which... 
I'm reluctant to believe. It comes from Castleton in Derbyshire, and it derives from the French blue jaune, which basically means blue and yellow, which is unusual because it's never actually found in France. It's only from the UK. It's characterised, of course, as the name would suggest, by blue and yellow, and has been mined since about the 1800s. This obviously hasn't been a rundown of every mineral in the UK. There are too many, I don't have time, and neither of us have the attention span. So what I'm going to be doing over the next few weeks and months is turning this into a larger series of videos talking about various different minerals, not just from the UK, but from countries around the world. So I'll do India, Australia, or I'll do Canada, or I'll do Russia, Brazil, etc, etc. Let me know in the comments, wherever it happens to be, what kind of countries you would like me to do next and what kind of minerals you would like me to focus on.